step one, always, always rename all of your GUI components that you're going to deal with. So I'm going to call this LBL moving thingy because we don't know what it is yet. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'll be moving thing in. So all action elements. I'm setting the layout of this panel to be absolutes. And the reason why I'm setting it to be absolute is because if you will, hello. Um, <laughs> if you set uh, something to be absolute, it means you can uh, everything will be positioned exactly X, Y, you can specify it. And in this case, I'm wanting this button to move this label here. So to go through what our goal is during this, this button should move this label to the right. This progress bar should just be most going at a random rate. Just chilling and, and progressing. And this one, as soon as I drag it across, I want the number that's here to go into here. So we're just going to be learning how to get something to move with the button, how to get a, a timer to work to get it to progress by its own time, and how to get a slider to move. So very random. Um, the action elements, I've gone and I've, with the user clicks on the button, I've gone and I'll call the method called uh, move thingy. And now we're going to try to get this to work. Okay, so we need to get our label to move in here. Shouldn't that be void to move the user? So what we've done so far is we've just gotten the x, y, and height and width components of the existing position. We're then incrementing x by 100. We're then resetting the bounds of the component. Now something that might need to happen is because uh, we changed the movement of it, you might need to repaint that object because it might not exist yet. It might not uh, specify the change. So let's just take a look at what, what's happening here. Let's run it and see what, how, what it does. And um, what you'll notice is that when I press the button, it moves, doesn't it? Nice. So we don't actually require any repainting. So that was quite easy. Way too much, but that's fine. So we need X plus 10. Okay, so if, if you take a look here, so you can mess around. We can now change this to plus 10, and then that would move. And obviously up, you'll just change the Y axis and that kind of stuff. And what we can do is we can even make our slider uh, change the size of this object, which is quite cool. All right, so to move it, you just get the values of the width, height, X, Y, whatever and then you change whichever values you want and then you work with it from there. Now, next step is I want to get this progress bar to now just move. Now, to do that, we're wanting it to move at the time, so we're wanting a loop to happen in the background, and we don't want to stop everything else from being able to communicate with it. So, for example, if I just went to my source and I created something saying public void uh, progress, and I just then decided to go uh, while true, Ooh, that's dangerous. actually yeah, what I'll do is I'll go for tab and I'll do while i is less than 100 and then we literally just go and we uh, delay and we say okay um, let's go, I've lost my train of thought now, damn it, what am I talking about, um, we just then go and we increment uh, the progress bar from 0 to 100 and we try to set a time out, the issue with that is there is a, I think you guys should stop messing around the guy's machine uh, <laughs> his password is still his name, so it doesn't look like time I works. But now, the idea is, is then the rest of your program will freeze. So you need to create it as a thread. Okay, so, so we're going to get it to progress however we want. But the first thing you're going to learn is you're going to have to use, in your code segment section, you'll see that there's an item called a uh, thread. Now, inside your thread, you'll see a thread is quite easy. Oh, hello. This is, uh, I should open this on WordPad. My bad. Um, Okay, so you'll see in your thread, here I've gone through how to create a thread. And here's the, the main concept of a thread right here. It's just this segment over here. And you'll notice new thread runnable. And this just means that it will exist within itself. It, it will separate it from the rest of the program. So the rest of the program will not pause. So to show you that, if I put that into here, um, while game, game is not a, so this is, if I say while true, which means this will happen forever. And then if I go, here I created two other variables inside there, but that's not important. If I go with thread sleep 500, I now need to refer to it. Now, this is where static becomes quite important. Okay, before before I, I do this, let me quickly just back out the, the thread here. So I'm, I'm cancelling the thread. So this program should ooh, fail. I didn't cancel the full thread, did I? This is going to end badly, sir. Very badly. Uh, okay, so now if I did this, the first thing I want to talk about is if I now want to try and refer to, you'll notice I can't refer to my progress bar, pro thing. Hey, look, I can. <laughs> okay, I can right now, but you'll notice when I put it in a thread, I would not be able to. So let, let, I'll show you that just now. <laughs> okay, uh, so pro thingy, and we're going to say set value. I'm assuming that's what it is. And we're going to say set value to I. 
So what's going to happen is every 500th, now as far as I'm aware, 1,000 is one second. I could be wrong with that, but I think 1,000 is one second. We are going to set the value of the previous bar to one more. So when I run this now, what should happen, if, if it's actually going to work, Phil, <laughs> yeah, that button works. Oh, you know what? Am I ever calling this method? <laughs> no, it's to self. Call the method. So, you well, hello. Progress. So I'm just calling the method. As I start the program, I'm calling the method. And what you'll notice is my program freezes. We can't even see it. Yeah, I can't see it either. <laughs> it's just nothing happening. And the reason why is because all it's thinking about doing is this. It doesn't think about anything else. It's like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. That's all it's thinking about. It's not thinking about anything else. So that's why we need to create it in a thread, is because we need it to actually separate it to allow it to think about something else. So it's separated as a separate task that is running, and it, it, it separates itself from the rest of the program. Now you'll see here, pro thingy now becomes red, because as soon as it becomes existence outside of this, it becomes a separate thread running, it doesn't know what pro thingy is, because it's now separating itself from the class. So you have to go greed on pro thingy. Um, no, because also then, there's remember, down here, we can't just go GUI.ProThingy, and the reason why is because we actually create a new instance of our GUI. So we're actually referring, unless we gave this a specific name, we wouldn't be able to refer to it. So there's a couple of ways of, of, of solving this. And the easiest way is because we now can't refer to ProThingy because it exists outside of the class, the easiest way to do it is to customize this code and to make this static. Which means to make pro thingy static. So. so I've made pro thingy static, which means that you can actually even make the whole class static if you really wanted to. But it means that nothing, no matter how many instances you create, there will only be one of this. So even if you created ten instances of this frame, there will only be one pro thingy. Yeah. So now I can refer to pro thingy outside of there, which is now local variable referred from inner class must be final or effectively final. So not static. Oh, you know what it is? It's I. <laughs> um, I is outside of it. So in other words, uh, this here, this is me being silly. This should actually be here. Okay, so in other words, I was the method that it was battling with as well. Um, close that thingy. Close that thingy. So now you'll notice that now the loop is here. Now the try catch. I don't know why there's a catch here. I don't know where I've run an exception. Oh, it's because this needs to be in a try catch, that's why. There was a try catch there. Surround with try catch. Cool. Alright, so now let's check if this works. We're now running it as a separate thread with a sleeper of 500 and we're changing the value of pro thingy by R, but we're running it as a thread. And all I did is I literally copied and pasted that code down and inside there. Ooh, and I've now got a while true still. Damn it. I don't yeah, want to loop forever. Forever, sir. Oh. Um, I only want to loop until uh, 100, so it'll just progress. Now, uh, uh, Nick was right. I could also just make it randomly so it drops up and down, up and down, just goes mad. Uh, we, we could do that, but that's. One time. I was trying to download now, negatively now, you check. So every half a second it goes up, by one, da, 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 uh, it's, re it's, it's progressing along. So it's a time mapping. And you also notice now that I can do this. So it allows two events to happen at the same time because it's running as separate threads. Uh, so, do you guys get that? So, so how would you code? The question there, sorry, I'll pause the video, was how to get the progress bar to uh, keep track of a download. Um, and personally, I think you would have something that would just be checking on the progress of the download. So it would be running in a thread just checking it. But what I'll do is I'll set the max value to the number of kilobytes. Oh, okay. So if I set the minimum value zero, the maximum value, the number of kilobytes that that uh, thing is, and then when you just look, okay, how much have I downloaded? How many kilobytes have I downloaded? How many kilobytes have I downloaded? And then, downloaded, and then a way to set it. The yeah, there's a property on the the, slide, the progress bar called maximum. So you see, I've set the maximum to 100 here on through the, okay. this, but you can quite easily change it to set max. So then you run your method like set max to the size of the download. The part that we're working with is now, we want to, ch wherever this user moves the slider, we want to set the value of this label to be where we move the slider to. So we want to get the values from the slider. So now, firstly, 
we're gonna have to look at the event that this slide is keeping track of. So if we go to events, um, we've got to first get change state change. Nope. This, this is where it does get a little bit tricky. Um, property change. Nope. Um, is to figure out which one of these is actually what the, the, the item that changes when you move it. So what I normally do is I go and I say, I think it might be V over votable change for some reason. I don't know why I think that. But what I would do is I would first just go SART VOE change. <laughs> okay. I'll just literally put a, an item in there to print it out. And I might do the same for a couple of the other ones because if I'm unsure which event is, is is kept track of when I move the slider, I might it might be, for example, which one do you guys think it would be? Um, uh, let's say if we think it might be uh, change, state change. So let's say if we think it was this, I would then also just go start state change. Um, and then that will then, uh, we can now run the program and we can see what it prints out. So now when I move this, state. So, okay, so I was very wrong. Uh, so state, state changes, not that one doesn't change. Oh yeah, so, um, so this is the one we want to work with and that's the code where we want to, the event to listen. So we would then call the method from here. So we're going to call it as... Uh, okay, so now we'll create our method up here called slide baby. Uh, public void slide baby. I feel like, sir, like a lot of your uh, YouTube videos have a lot of innuendo. In them. Yeah, I'm saying hi baby to you. Yeah, I'm subscribed now guys, he's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> what method will actually get us the slide value as an integer? Now, if you take a look, if we go get, uh, we take a look at what get there is. Now, there is a get value. Now, whether this actually does contain just what the value that slider is, I have no idea. But we'll try that <laughs> and see. We'll set lbl move thingy dot set uh, text to be v and to convert it to a string. We just add the inverted commas to it and we check if that works. So it might actually be very easy. This 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 problem here. So the progress bar is more sliding when I move this. Well, hello, it works. Yay. Okay, so the slider was much easier than I thought. Um, okay, so we messed up. <laughs> slow cap, slow cap. Move around. Can we not go around, 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 around. Why does it when you move? Problem found. If we move the button into here, as soon as we move the slider, it recenters to where it was. So now why, when I change its value, does it go back to its original position? Dum-dum-dum. <laughs> Dum dum dum. Okay. Um, 